our, our lesson today um, is uh, 2.3, um, depending on the book that you have. As far as the pages, our refuge and our strength, I will look to God as my refuge and strength. Our um, devotional reading, the focus verse is from Psalms 46, 1. Uh, God is our refuge and its strength, a very present help in trouble. And our uh, lesson text is also uh, the chapter, chapter 46 in Psalms. And then also Chronicles 32, 1 through 8. We'll start with Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, through the, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. Hallelujah. The earth, the heathen raged and kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made on the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And from 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 1 through 8. Okay. Amen. 2 Chronicles 32. After these things, the establishment thereof. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. Then Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem. He took counsel with the, his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So they, there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains, the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Also, he strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. He set captains of war over the people he, the, and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. I, be, I remember Elder Harn preaching on that. Amen. There be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and fight our battles. And the people rested themselves uh, upon the word of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. After, oh, our lesson reading ends at verse 8. Amen. We're thankful for God's word. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed. Amen. Hallelujah. God is our refuge and our strength. The children will be dismissed to their Sunday school classes, and Elder Sumner is teaching our lesson this morning. Amen. And praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Great and greatly to be praised. Amen. So we thank the Lord for this lesson today. Uh, certainly, at the very least, a lesson of encouragement. Amen. Uh, what we need today is encouragement. Amen. And uh, 
We serve a God that is able. Yes. Amen. We, this is what the lesson is dealing with today. And we look into it. We can take this personally, uh, this lesson. Because days in which we live, times in which we live, and the things that are going on out there in the world, uh, especially those who oppose God, oppose the church, um, such a, a movement. It's nothing new. It's been around ever since uh, man began to multiply on the face of the earth, but there's uh, such a movement to uh, deny the power of God and deny that even God exists uh, even out there in the world. And uh, our, the way things are going, and, uh, even those who still profess that there is a God, it's such a shallow type of thing. Um, it, it says if you know God is uh, just something that we do once or twice a week uh, in the, the real world of course the, the, the way they like to uh, is is uh, what they have in their own agendas today what things are going on it's hard to understand nowadays the way the world is going it's Difficult to try to, uh, I think, what is going on in their minds uh, in this world today? Our politicians, our leaders uh, of the world, and what can they be thinking? Uh, but then you get brought back to uh, the, the reality is that uh, God is still on the throne. Amen. And uh, with all the mess that's going on out there, God's not one little bit confused. Amen. There's been no uh, ground gained by the devil uh, to try to overthrow God. That's not going to happen. Amen. There may be a lot of people overthrown, but you're not going to fool God. Amen. So we, we certainly trust in God. We trust in the Lord. Our, our lesson, of course, is God is our refuge. Amen. As we look at the book of Psalms. Psalms here, of course, uh, I believe we're dealing with uh, the things that David went through. And uh, as he writes to, uh, uh, he writes here to, uh, the, as a psalmist, he, he writes, it says, to the sons of Korah, uh, which are the, the priesthood of, of, of Israel. And he writes about these things, and, and it's uh, this particular uh, chapter in our books, particularly in the book of Psalms, in these verses here, are, are, are so familiar to the most of us uh, because we resort to these uh, verses uh, time after time because they carry a lot of uh, weight, if you will. They carry a lot of power. That, well, after all, this is the Word of God we're, we're, we're handling this morning. Uh, this, this is the word of God. And so uh, that's the answer today. The world don't accept that. The world pretty much rejects that. But uh, God's word is the answer. The, the answer to every trouble in the world today, uh, God can handle it. God's got an answer. Yeah. Amen. And we just sometimes have to wait and wait. They that wait upon the Lord. Amen. And so uh, if we wait on God, that's the key. If we're waiting on God, amen. <clears throat> not waiting on the government to change their ways. And not waiting on uh, uh, this individual, that individual uh, to, to say something or to do something. But we're waiting on God. In the face of all that's going on out there. The saints of God. We're just waiting for the Lord. Amen. I find comfort in that. Amen. Because we know that God's word is true. And we can trust. It, it, there's, there's such a comfort about being able to trust in something. Amen. And, and we're putting our lives. We're putting our, even our eternal life in the hands of God. And I've said this so many times over and over in, in my saved life. Uh, take it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. For what better place could it be? 
Can you think of a better place for your soul, for your life, for your concerns, for your needs, whatever it may be? Can you think of a better place than with God? Amen. I, it, there just isn't one because uh, when we talk about uh, uh, what the psalmist is dealing with here, I, I guess, and uh, again, in light of the experiences that David is able to write about uh, concerning victory, amen, concerning being able to have a source, a place to go to, uh, amen, a, a source of help. He's our help in time of need, amen. He's a present help, as he writes here. He, God is present. God is present, amen. That's what we got to... Uh, by the word of God, we 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 come to that knowledge early on. Amen. God is present. God is real. God as the source. And and as David opens up uh, the psalm here in forty six, God is. First of all, God is. God is. We must believe that God is, and that He is a rewarder of them. Them, that's us, them that diligently, even not half hearted, half, uh, halfway, but with a lot of doubt, uh, but diligently we seek the Lord, amen, that we might find Him, amen. He said, and, and the psalm says, God is, God is, God is our refuge, amen. We have a refuge. What is a refuge? I, to me, the refuge is uh, a place of safety. Amen. A place of safety. A place that we can feel good in. Uh, uh, it, it's good to feel safe. Yeah. When you're not safe, that's uncomfortable. Amen. It, it, and and you, you, there's too much unknown about it. Uh, amen. It, it, you, you know, we, we experience things like that every day, perhaps, that you, you uh, try things, you do things, you trust things, you depend on things, but there's always that measure of doubt whether that thing will come to pass. Or, you know, we, we hope the medicines that we take are going to do what they're supposed to do. Amen. But I always said, but you know, the bottom line is I put my trust in God. Amen. I put my trust in God. And so, uh, he's never failed me. Has he ever failed you? Can I get a hand? If, uh, I don't see no hands. I don't expect to see any hands. Uh, even, and so, because God never fails, period. And so, uh, when we consider God, when we make God our place of refuge, uh, we can't get any better than that. Amen. Can't get more sure, sure than that. Amen. Because uh, God's truth is sure. It's absolute. There isn't anything absolute in the world. God is the only absolute. Amen. And, and, and so why would you put your trust in anything else when, 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 when you put it in God, it's a sure thing. Amen. As I say, it's money in the bank. Uh, it's, it's a sure thing. And so uh, David, with all of his experiences, who could be a better author uh, than, than David of this subject? Amen. I mean, others as well, of course. Uh, and we'll study and touch on some of that uh, with uh, our other's uh, uh, portion of Scripture here. But uh, there's stories. The Bible is just full of stories of not just David or uh, this uh, this one or that one, uh, and uh, but full of stories, uh, 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 true stories, real stories that show forth the uh, that uh, God is our refuge. Amen. A place that we can go to. Amen. It's good to be able to have that kind of uh, uh, position. In your heart, in your mind, in your soul, that in the midst of everything, and it wasn't that David had it easy by any stretch of the imagination. 
If you read the accounts of the, uh, of the life of, of, of David and, and, and others, uh, of course, none of it ever came easy. None of it ever, there's, there's many times there was, uh, David was, was fighting for his life. Many times uh, uh, he was praying unto God. He was going to, uh, to God in prayer because he was in danger. He was in trouble. Amen. Whether it be in the sense of uh, Saul, King Saul trying to kill him, and, and, <clears throat> and other uh, kings that rose up that would try to kill him, uh, amen, but, uh, uh, or uh, whether it be something he, he foolishly did. Uh, David made mistakes. David made mistakes. And uh, we make mistakes. Uh, and, but, and this is no excuse uh, for us to do anything wrong or make mistakes. But the fact of the matter is we make mistakes. And when you make mistakes, you need some help. You need help. And, 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 and so uh, God is there. David said God is there. God is there. Now, again, uh, we don't abuse <coughs> our privilege. We don't just say, well, I'm going to do this because I know God's going to help me. That, you know, that's not going to get you very far. Right. Amen. But David had a good heart. The Bible declares that. And he wasn't taking advantage uh, of God. He didn't take advantage of, uh, of his place of refuge, his place of help. He was most thankful and humble. And, and so these are the things that God is looking for. You can't fool God. You know that. Amen. This this has to come from the heart. This has to come from 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 the right uh, frame of mind, right attitude, uh, and 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 God looked uh, for uh, David and others. God looked upon them when they made mistakes and did foolish things, and and God looked to see uh, what their action would be upon. Uh, uh, acknowledgement of these things and so David he made his mistakes but we see and read in the accounts of the, these times that he failed God and made mistakes that he had the kind of heart that he repented he would come to repentance godly sorrow amen and, and, and yield himself into the hand of God and his attitude was Lord I certainly am sorry for my mistakes, sorry for what I've done, uh, amen. And, but I and I put my life, I put my uh, situation into your hands, Lord. Whatever that, whatever I got to uh, suffer, whatever I got to pay, whatever I got, whatever I have to do, Lord, my heart is to acknowledge, to acknowledge my sin, amen. A lot of people. Uh, uh, that's a problem for them. They, you know, they try to point fingers. When they make a mistake, they want to point fingers at someone, always at somebody else. And I always found that amazing. Well, you know, down through the years, I deal with people like that, and even myself, of course. And that your first reaction is you want to, you got to cover this up. That's you know, that's your, that's what Adam and Eve tried to do. When uh, they sinned against God, and and their act, reaction was, we got to cover up, we got to hide this. Well, of course, you can't hide anything from God. <clears throat> you can't hide anything from God. But God is looking at; uh, He doesn't applaud us for our mistakes. But God is looking to see what are we going to do. Amen. Where are we going to go? Are we going to run to our friends and? And try to convince them that we were right, and or, or, or are they gonna? Are you gonna try to make excuse? Well, I, I know it was wrong, but yeah. you see, and and uh, are are you gonna just come forward and say, Lord, I've sinned, right. I've lived, I've sinned, Lord, and I deserve any and all uh, punishment, any and all judgment that you have placed upon me. Because you didn't do it. 
I did it. Amen. You didn't make me do this or make me do that. I did. So, uh, but the, the bottom line here is for our lesson today is that David had a resource. David had a place to go. And, and, and with the right heart, if you go to, the, to God in the right heart, God is a loving God. God is a God of mercy. Amen. Yes, he's a God of judgment, but in his judgment, God is merciful. Amen. In his judgment, God is loving. Amen. And, and you usually can't get that in the world. I mean, the, the two don't really go together out there in the world. Uh, amen. You do wrong and, and, and out there in the world, you're going to pay, you're going to pay the price for sure. And uh, people, your brothers, your sisters even, amen, we're, we're not as forgiving. We're not as merciful. We're not as understanding as God is. Amen. We come to our conclusions about situation and and we we place our opinion and judgment upon things and um, uh, many times it's uh, it, it, it doesn't help it hurts the situation Amen. I don't want anybody uh, handling my soul uh, but God Amen. I want to place my soul into his hands Amen. and, and, and let God work uh, in, in my stead Amen. We have this privilege. We have. The, the, that's the blessings among many other things. Is the blessings of being in the church. That's the blessings of being a child of God. A saint, if you will. Amen. Not that we are perfect in any shape or form. Amen. But uh, in our imperfections, we have a place to go to. To cleanse, to repair, to restore to help, amen, because God is, and God is our refuge, amen. amen. So glad I got God to go to, amen. amen, because many times we don't understand, and man doesn't understand. God always understands, amen. He always knows, and so he said he's, he's, he's our refuge and strength, and strength. Well, we learn in the New Testament times that our strength is the Holy Ghost. That's our strength. Amen. That's God, of course. God and the Holy Ghost is the same thing. But God is our strength. God is our strength. Without God, we have no strength. We have no victory. We can't overcome. We won't overcome. Amen. We don't have the power to do so. Amen. But God is our strength. Our power comes from God. The Holy Ghost is our strength. Amen. And so uh, this is what we learn from. This is why we resort to this scripture so many times in our life. Uh, amen. Because it's so true. It's so powerful. Amen. And, 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 and this is something that God has given us. You know, it's it's one thing to have, uh, you know, the uh, you know, the power and the ability to do things, but how do we how do we apply it? How do we receive it? How do we administer? How do we uh, use it, if you will? Amen. And so we put our trust and our confidence in God. We learn from God. We learn from the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was given to us to be a teacher. Amen. Along, along with the strength and the power and, and all of that, uh, the Holy Ghost is going to direct us and guide us and show us and keep us. Amen. What a place to be. What a place to be. Amen. When you can be in the realm and the power of God and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm so glad I've had the Holy Ghost all these years. How many times have I resorted or called upon God, amen, and, and called upon that spirit within me, amen, that Holy Ghost power, that Holy Ghost strength, amen, and, and be able to recognize and acknowledge, <clears throat> amen, this is coming from God. 
This is something that was given to me when he filled me with his spirit. Amen. Now, being in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost in you, that's the greatest refuge I can think of. Amen. And that's what the church is blessed with. Amen. Since the day of Pentecost. We're put in a different place. We're in a different place than what the world is. Amen. We have a, a refuge that the world does not have. And can't have it. Amen. In that state. Now the good news is they don't have to stay without hope. They don't have to stay in that condition, but if they'll trust and believe God, repent and, and be saved, be uh, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and depend upon the leading of the Holy Ghost in our lives, we can't find a better place than that, this side of heaven. The church is the place to be. Amen? And, and, and that is God. God is the church. Amen. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And, of course, he was referring to uh, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is my refuge. Amen. Jesus is the place to go. Amen. And so, uh, again, we, th these are things that are, that are really, um, you know, familiar to most of us. That, that we see these things. But you know, the reality and the truth of it is that this, this, this being the word of God, amen, we can trust this. We can trust this. You know, you think about the things in the world and we, we try to support uh, what we think is good. Or we try to do this. But then we, we, we realize in our hearts that, that even with good intentions, Things don't always work out right. Things don't always, what appears to be good and seems to be good doesn't always prove to be good. Uh, life out there is going to fail you. Amen. Because you're going to fail yourself even. And so you gotta have, you got to have a source. you got to have help. Amen. You're not going to go through this life unscathed. You're not going to go through this life uh uh, mistake free amen it's just not going to happen uh, but the important thing is what are you going to do when the need arises when it comes time I, I got to have help in this I can't do this by myself I can't do this and so where are we going to go amen but to the Lord where can we go someone said where else can we go Amen. Uh, but to God. And that's not, a, that's not said in a negative sense. That's said in a very positive sense. That's not demeaning uh, God or demeaning our, our need or anything like that. But that's bringing God praise and glory. Because he is our source. Amen. I'm not ashamed, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I, you know, people sometimes uh, uh, behave as such that they, they, they're almost ashamed to admit it. Amen. But Paul said, I'm not ashamed. Why would I be ashamed of life? Amen. And God is life. Why and how can I be ashamed of that? Amen. How can I be ashamed of my help? My help. It's come is going to come from God, Amen. And, and, and so we, we we that's why we praise Him. That's why we uh, sing praises unto God. That's why we worship, Amen. Because God is real. Uh, he said, "Therefore, will we not fear? Fear will hinder you greatly at times, and uh, uh, fear will cause doubt. Fear." Uh, it causes doubt to arise. And, and there's nothing good about doubt. Amen. And, and doubt will weaken your faith. And so, uh, but uh, the psalmist says, therefore will we not fear. And not, why? Because God is in this. 
God, is, when you know and realize that God is in this and is with you, amen, fear flees. There's no place for fear. Amen. And he said, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Now we know these are extreme examples or suggestions here, a thought, but it carries the uh, it's a, it's a, it's said in such a way. The psalmist is trying to express uh, 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 his need, uh, the importance of uh, believing in God, Amen, and, and uh, trusting in God. That we can put this kind of trust in God. That even to the very extreme, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible. With God. Now, there's a lot of things impossible without God. A lot of things impossible without God. Amen. But nothing is impossible with God. And, and so we have that. We have that confidence in God. Why would we go anywhere else then? Why would we seek another source? If you, if you really believe in what the scriptures are saying, Amen. Why would you follow another? Amen. Why would you allow somebody else to deceive you? Amen. And thinking that they have a better way than what God has. Amen. And so it, 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 that certainly doesn't make sense. Uh, he said, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, no matter how big the problem is, don't matter how impossible it is, Amen. We are with God. And uh, God is not subject to, uh, amen, anything or anyone. Uh, amen. God speaks his word and it goes out and it doesn't return to him void. In other words, what God speaks, it's going to happen. There's nothing, no maybes about it, no nothing. When God speaks, it's going to happen. Amen. He said, whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Um, I dropped down here to verse 10. And having said that, amen, the psalmist says, be still. In other words, settle down. Amen. Don't allow the devil to spook you. Don't allow the devil to uh, trip you up. Amen. Be still. There's times when you, you just, you know, don't panic. Don't, you know, don't run. Don't panic. Amen. And uh, trust God. Uh, call upon God. Amen. Uh, you know, be still and just let God do his thing. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. God says, I am God. That's all we need to know about that. God is God. Even sometimes we just have to be still and settle down and not get frantic. As he said, fret not. Don't worry. Amen. You know, when Moses was, had led the children of Israel out of uh, Egypt, and they come to, of course, the Red, uh, to the Red Sea, and they couldn't go left, couldn't go right, sure enough, couldn't go back. And all they were facing was the sea. Now, now what are you going to do? They didn't have no ships to get into. And, and they begin to murmur. They begin to, oh, you, you, you brought us out here in the wilderness, and, and, and what, we're all going to die right here when the Pharaoh catches up to us with his army. Amen. They were this and that and that. And, and they'd already, they'd already failed to remember how they got to where they at. They were in bondage. Heavy bondage. They, they could not do anything for themselves there in Egypt in bondage. Amen. Captivity. And, and, and God brought them out. God brought them out. And miraculously brought him out. You remember the plagues? That wasn't just an everyday experience. 
That was the hand of God. That was evidence and proof that Israel has a God. Israel has the God. And then when they got to the Red Sea, they, they got rattled. And they began to complain and began to, you know, show fear. Amen. Well, the leadership of Moses. How important is our leadership? The leadership of Moses with the power of God behind him. Amen. You know, stand still. Just observe what God is going to do. Can I stand and see the salvation of the Lord? And God parts the sea. Amen. Is that impossible or not? Is that scientifically impossible? That cannot Happen. Amen. The forces of nature can't do that. Amen. <clears throat> it would take a power that is able to exceed and uh, over anything concerning the laws of nature, concerning physics, whatever. It, it is impossible for that sea to do what it did. Amen. But God speaks to the water. God speaks to the sea. God speaks to the wind. Yeah. Amen. God speaks to the things that are not human. Amen. Think about this now. Human Humanity was on the seashore without hope. Mm -hmm. and that's what they were thinking. Right. And so Moses encouraged them. And he said, just stand back and see what oh, God can oh. do. Sometimes we just have to stand back yes. and see what God can do. My God. My Amen. And, and that's what happened. The sea parted. And Israel was allowed to go on. Cross the Red Sea on dry ground. Amen. <laughs> on dry ground. And then, of course, closes it back up on the enemy. You don't have to worry about the enemy. God take care of that. Amen. And so, uh, what a place to have been when we think about these biblical stories. If you could have just been there to, to eyewitness that, that would never have been great. Amen. But in our heart, in our faith, yeah. amen, we can see it in that regard. Amen. This happened. These things happen. Yes. We have written account. We have a written account from, ex, from, from those who, who did see it. Amen. We have the account that God provides. Amen. And God uh, can back up his word. He, uh, has he ever failed? Has God ever failed at anything? No. And guess what? He never will. So the promises that God makes to those, now we got to underline, under, uh, uh, underline these things. The, the promises that God makes to those who trust in him. Amen. Who believe in him. Uh, amen. What a place to be. We've got it. We've got the best place. Amen. There's not a better place to be. No matter where you're at in the world, that's the thing, too, is if you're in the hands of God, it doesn't make any difference what nation you're in. You keep your trust and your confidence in God, and he's able to sustain you anywhere and everywhere. Amen. And, and, but I'm most thankful because I'm here. There are better places to be in life, but I think we, as uh, citizens of the United States, even I think we're in the best country as far as conditions go. Amen. As far as conditions go, I wouldn't trade it for any place else. Amen. And I thank God. I thank God uh, that uh, that I live here. Amen. As bad as it seems to be getting, 
and you, you've heard me say this many times, and it's just going to get worse. So how can we be happy? Because our trust is in God. Yeah. And we read the book. And we come to find out <coughs> that the church is going to overcome. Our refuge is going to overcome. Our place in God is going to give us the victory. And that's what David's life is about, is victory after victory after victory. And in different ways and means that God was able to show uh, what he can do in, in, in the lives of, of his children. And, and, and that's why David is such a great character uh, in the scriptures. And he, he was such a great king because he was able to, to trust in God. And, and this, this was uh, therefore allowed to go out uh, into the world. And, and, and people had to acknowledge the God of Israel because of the things that God did through David. Amen. David, of course, be the first one to tell you about the goodness and the greatness of God. Amen. So we have this, we have this witness. The Hebrew writer lets us know we have this witness. Amen. Of those before us, our forefathers, we have the witness that speaks of the power and the might of God. For those who will call upon the name of God, over and over and over again, God has expressed it, amen, many times, many times, that he's the place to be. Yeah. Amen. He's the place. Being a Christian today is the place to be. And I want to emphasize Christian. Uh, uh, that has become a very, uh, you know, loose type of saying. But in, in all truth, in all reality, Amen. This is the place to be. Uh, is in God. This is a talk about safety. There is no safety except what's in God. Amen. Because everything and everybody can fail you and will at one time or another, except God. Except God. Amen. All right. So be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. We're able to uh, claim that rightfully so uh, in this day and age as saints of God. Amen. Because we have heard the gospel and we believed it. Amen. We have heard the gospel, and we have received it. Amen. And we are in that place. God is our refuge. Now, in the latter part of the lesson here with some from Chronicles, uh, this is a deed about um, Sennacherib, who was the Assyrian king. He comes up rises up against uh, Hezekiah uh, and proceeds to go his, his, his intention his purpose is to uh, take over Jerusalem as he has pushed his weight and has overcome many of the other nations surrounding nations and he's, he's on a crusade here uh, of becoming uh, king of the world, I guess you would say, and uh, he came. He comes up against Hezekiah, who was the king of Judah at the time. Hezekiah coming from a bad background, and that his father was a very evil and wicked man and a king, and uh, yet Hezekiah was 180 degrees different, and to the point. Her God even speaks well of him, amen, because he was going about doing good. And his, 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 he, he expressed himself as such a man and that he trusted God, the God of Israel, the God of Judah, 
He trusted God, and and this shows forth in, in his actions. As, as what was in his power what to do, he was doing it. He, he destroyed all of the false idols that uh, his father allowed to be constructed, and, and so on and so forth. And the and he put down all of those uh, idols and and the worship of those idols and and, and the ways of those uh, heathens, if you will. And and so God smiled upon that. And, and uh, because he expressed his trust in God, and so he he, he goes out and he, he continues to express uh, his way of, uh, of trusting and serving God. He put his cop, and he did this publicly. And this is well known, and 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 he stands in leadership a leadership role here, and directing and showing the people. That there is but one God, the God of Judah, Amen. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Amen. And so um, he, he, we pick it up here. He said, after these things, and the, uh, the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and then entered into Judah because he was going to overthrow, overtake Judah, uh, and thought to win for them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and with his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. In other words, he took action against his enemy. Amen. And, and so he, he, he wisely began to uh, enfor- or reinforce his military uh, abilities, amen, because he, he knew Sennacherib was coming, and so he began to prepare. And I got here I got written in, um, on the sideline in my Bible, uh, Sister Sumner's, on February 1st of the year 2000. This was her thought. She used this as a text, and her thought was, Make preparation for the battle. Yes. Make preparation for the battle. And this is what uh, King Hezekiah began to do. He, he saw, he was allowed to see what was coming. He heard, of course, the march and the movement of uh, Sennacherib. And so as a wise man, he began to make ready for the battle. He began to get himself uh, in position and place Judah in position for their best opportunity and chance of uh, being able to stand up against the attack that was coming. And, and so uh, we need to be strong. We need to strengthen ourselves. Uh, and, and, not, and this is not a battle in the literal sense. Uh, as uh, Scripture talks about, but our warfare is spiritual. Our warfare is against the adversary of our soul. And, and, but we need to prepare ourselves. We need to get ready. We need to strengthen ourselves. Amen. And where is our strength coming from? God. And even though he did uh, go about uh, building up his armor, building up his soldiers, building up uh, uh, the, the, the warfare, uh, things of warfare, uh, because he, it was a literal battle here, amen. At the same time, his trust was in God, amen. Even with all this, and and so let's drop down to verse five. Also, he strengthened himself and built up the wall that was broken, raised it up to the towers and another wall without, and repaired uh, Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. In other words, he got things ready for the battle. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together in the streets and the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them, saying. Now, that may sound strange, but this is what his uh, purpose was. Uh, 
if you got people all worried and scared and running and doubtful, and yeah. you're not going to be able to stand against the enemy that way. Amen. You have to be able to exercise power and, and, and authority over uh, your opposition. But he spake comfortably to them. In other words, he spoke to them confidence and trust in God. Amen. He brought their minds, get them minds focused, along with, uh, in the literal sense of getting things prepared. Like, I think the key here is, uh, the point here is, uh, we have to be prepared. Yes. We have to be prepared. And, and, and right now, the, the world we live in, the things that are, that are happening, and like I said, getting worse, we got to prepare ourselves for this, saints. We have to prepare ourselves for the battle. You bet. No, it's not going to be in warfare as, as we think of it in the world. But we, in our minds and in our hearts, we've got to get our minds and our hearts prepared bet, for what's coming. Trouble's coming. We, we, we know some of it's already here. But more trouble's coming. We got to prepare ourselves in God. We got to prepare ourselves in His Word. Amen. More than ever before, we've got to we got to shake ourselves up. We have got to exercise our faith. We have got to fill our minds and our hearts with trusting in God. Amen. Standing upon His Word. It, it, it's a good time. It's a good day. Amen. To get involved in the word. Yes. Amen. Because you're hearing all kinds of things out there. 24-7. Bottom line about all this stuff, it's trying to erode your faith. It's trying to get you to doubt your belief and your faith in God. Amen. It's trying to scare you. It's trying to deceive you. Well, now, who's behind all of that? I, I see these words, and you will, you'll learn in the scriptures, this is what Satan is doing. This is who's behind the scenes with that. Amen. But we're going to prepare. We're going to prepare. Amen. We're not going to allow ourselves to be deceived. Amen. God is real. God is alive. God is active. God is. God is. In this day and time, people say, well, that's archaic. That is, you know, that's just fables. That is wise tales, all this sort of thing. God is. We have seen it on a daily basis. We're not blind to it. Because why? We're saved. We can see. Our eyes are not blinded by the truth. Amen. But we see the truth. We believe in the truth. We trust in the truth. Amen. We're going to keep coming to church. Yeah. Amen. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep fasting. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep believing. We're going to come to Sunday school. We're going to come to Bible class. Amen. We're going to go ahead with this. Because we know that's the only place to be. When it's all said and done, amen, only the church will survive all of that. And we're in that. That's our refuge. Yes, the church is my refuge. I'm not ashamed to say that. I need church. Amen? I need to be here. Amen. I need to speak with God. Now, and I'm not talking about just this building. Uh, you can be in, in the church uh, on the job, uh, out there in the grocery store or whatever. Uh, w when I talk about being in the church, I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about the church that Jesus built, that he, that he was talking about when he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. And we're in that with all of our heart, all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We cannot be overcome, but we will be 
the overcomer. Amen. All right. We're out of time. Now let me finish up here. And after you speak good words of faith to them. There's something about hearing the good word of faith that just thrills your heart and soul. He says, be strong and courageous. This is not a time to be weak Amen. and afraid. Amen. Don't be panicked like the rest of the world is. Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, what is this world coming to? Oh, 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 the world's coming to an end. Well, if it is, so be it. As long as I'm with Jesus, that's all right with me. Amen. And be strong and courageous and be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Syria nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. And the emphasis is placed upon the reason why there's more of us than him is because we have God. God with one person is still greater than all the rest of the world put together. Amen. We have the advantage. I'll finish up here with verse 8. With him is the arm of flesh. But with us, you know, and the cherub has the natural man in the warfare. He said, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battle. Amen. God will fight our battles. We don't even have to go to the front line. Because God's already there. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. We can rest upon God's word. That's where we find our peace and our confidence and our trust. And in God's word.